Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Hope everybody's well. It is the July coding challenge today. And let me just put the tunes back on. Ah. Uh, so yeah, we were suffering with a couple of drop frames earlier and my net, my internet, let's just move that book over there, is, um, has been struggling recently. I don't know why. I don't know why. Um, so... I immediately shut down a bunch of boxes, um, closed the laptop lid. So uh, hopefully it'll get better now. Take some some stuff off of the uh, network. As as far as I can see, the it seems to be going okay at the moment. Anyway, today we're going to crack on with the or do the July uh, coding challenge review. And if I go over to this view here. This is the codechallenges.howtocodewell.net. For those who don't know, every month what I do is I... Um, oh, that's great to hear. Thank you very much, Marco. Um, for every month, what I do... I'll put this in the link in the show in the links here. Uh, every month, what I do is I um, do, a, do a coding challenge. Um, and if you want to take part, it's fine, free to do so. Um, level up your skills and so forth and then at the end of the month what I do is I review these things on uh, on Twitch so you submit your coding repos um, to ah it's dropping again you submit your coding repos to the discord server and then uh, at the end of the month I will review them uh, live on Twitch and then announce the next one <laughs> Ah, oh, this is a bit annoying. It seems like my uh, the internet keeps um, having a wobble, having a wobble. So you'll see here that we've got regex tests. Okay, so this is the July uh, challenge, um, and uh, I have I've broken this up into five different sort of stages with increased levels of difficulty. I should say that the next challenge, the August challenge, is Python based. Uh, so, uh, to, if you're a Python developer, do stick around for that. So, regex tests. Okay, let's uh, let's work on some regex using this set of numbers: one, two, three, uh, nine, three, nine, and seven, eight, seven, eight, with hyphens in between. Complete the following levels. Um, and uh, in here, I've said you can use PHP, Python, JavaScript um, for the challenge and create one answer per level. So these are the levels below. I'm just gonna grab a cup of tea and then I will make sure all the code has been pulled down from the various places. Bear with me a mo. Yeah, I can see the, I can see the graph on the, um, the bitrate graph going up and down, up and down. So um, I don't know <laughs> how stable the stream is. I don't know. Um, and uh, on my creator dashboard thing, it's just frozen, so... <laughs> Who knows? Who knows if I'm even broadcasting live? Um, I hope I am. I'm going to continue, um, and uh, I, I will obviously put this up onto YouTube uh, a few weeks after this, so um, I will push this out to the Discord. Hey, MB Dealer! <laughs> That's an awesome username, MB Dealer. Thank you for uh, joining today. Hope you're having a great weekend. A great weekend. We've just um, we've taken Murphy, my English Springer Spaniel, out for um, for a long, long walk in the forest because we live quite close to a forest, and um, we did about eight kilometers, and uh, we've properly tired him out. He turned one um, literally like Thursday. So, he's a, he's still only a pup, but uh, he enjoyed the walk. We took it slow, and uh, yeah, yeah, he's now downstairs with uh, my wife, just chilling out and uh, having a bit of uh, R and R. <laughs> okay, I'm going to check whether we've got the right things in the right places in terms of the code, and then what I'll do is I'll go through the levels. So we had two submissions uh, this month, and they came from. I did an LS here. Uh, they came from the Teledon 
and Mr. DB303. Uh, so, thank you very much for you two for um, for submitting. And if I let's go into excuse me, let's go into the Tiladon first. I just want to make sure everything's wired up. So if I did an LS and then go to HTC, it's not that one, it's the, sorry, hyphen, uh, 2020 July challenge, and then did an LS. Ah, yeah, yeah, his birthday bandana. <laughs> yeah, he, it's really funny, right? He is terrified of balloons. We we only discovered that on th on Thursday because we blew up a load of balloons on Wednesday, and he well I say terrified. He growls and barks and um, sort of is very apprehensive. He's not terrified. He's just very sort of like he doesn't like them. He doesn't know what they are. He you know I held one up and I dropped it to the ground and it sort of obviously floated gracefully to the earth as it, as balloons usually do. He couldn't comprehend that. Um, <laughs> it looks like a ball. It's not a ball. It doesn't land like a ball. It doesn't smell like a ball. It's not a ball. I don't understand. So I'll bark at it. And he, that's what he did. He's barked and barked and barked. Um, growled. Doesn't like it. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining, Mr. DB. Mr. DB303. Um, right, what am I going to do here? I'm, I'm going to just cat the readme. Uh, this is JavaScript. This one's a JavaScript jobby. Uh, regex text. Okay, this is the same uh, readme as this one. That's fine as the one I've got. Um, if you want to run instructions, here we go. If you want to run and check the levels, you need to, you need npm. Okay, go to the folder JavaScript and run npm i to load the dependencies. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Uh, so let's do that. Let's go to the JavaScript folder, ls. I'm going to just cat the package.json for a minute. Um, package.json. What do you need? Bootstrap. jQuery. Oh gosh, I haven't used jQuery in yonks. Okay, uh, and bootstrap icons. Sweet, so this looks like there's going to be an interface. Okay, I'm I'm down with that. I'm down with that. That's cool. Um, I mean, I wasn't expecting an interface. <laughs> I was just expecting results based on these, but that's fine. That's cool. Um, I'm going to go into Mr. DB's now. Just I just want to suss out the the lay of the land, if you will. Uh, so let's go into out of the Tilladon, and I think it's Mr. DB303. Let's do an LS, and let's do... I've literally just pulled these down, so I just want to make sure... Aha! Okay, we've got an includes folder, index.php, level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4, level 5. Sweet, all the levels are done. We've got a style, and we've also got, very nicely, a readme file. .txt. Uh, okay, the submission, uh, languages, blah, 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 as required, awesome, good, 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 and index.php is also supplied to navigate between the levels, oh, very handy, uh, all levels have an input form, oh, th nice, so this is an interface too, the brief for the challenge is as follows, okay, cool, so that's the same one, I like that, adjust your answers to cope with the hyphens or bra brackets, cool, okay, alright, so I think that's fairly fairly straightforward in the sense of just getting them running, right? So if I did an LS here, we have, um, we got an index page, let's just cut that out, index.php, and then I'll just make sure it's not pulling anything down from any other website, no, it's just doing an includes of header, and includes of footer, let me just triple check what those are, includes of um, header, and then what I'll do is I'll discuss the actual challenge itself. Um, hang on a minute, what's going on? Cats includes uh, in includes, includes, there we go, uh, header. Um, okay, so this is pulling in some fonts. Uh, I just want to make sure it's not pulling in any, any, anything else. That looks good to me, and also on the footer too. 
Uh, nice. Nice. Okay, cool. All right. Let's get into the actual, what, what the challenge is. Let's talk through that. Okay. Okay. So let's work on the re some regex using a, this set of numbers. One, two, three, hyphen, nine, three, nine, hyphen, seven, eight, nine. Complete the following levels. You can use PHP, Python, JavaScript, or JavaScript for this challenge. So we've got a PHP and we've got a JavaScript um, submission. Create one answer per level, as we've seen. So the first level is the simplest way. Um, this is a trick question. It's a trick question. Uh, what is the simplest way to check for exactly, exactly this set of numbers? Remember, the simplest way is not always the correct way. Um, so how do you exactly check for exactly that number, <laughs> that set of uh, that characters, set of characters? Um, OK, level two. Use character classes to check for the for the numbers. Uh, you can also use sets if you want. So this is using character classes to check for the numbers. So these are the numbers here. Okay. And then uh, shorthand only. Now simplify the answer using shorthand. Now some people may have done shorthand already up here. That's fine. Uh, but uh, this is just sort of to give you an idea that there's. More than one way to skin a cat. <laughs> There's more than one way to solve this problem. Um, okay, then level four was to group the numbers. So turn those numbers into groups. So this would be group one, this would be group two, and this would be group three. Um, then level five, you see hyphens, I see brackets. Now this is the thing that spanned my head in several directions when I was trying to do this myself on stream. Uh, what happens if the hyphens are sometimes open and closed brackets like this? So there's just uh, open and closed brackets or like this. Uh, adjust your answers to cope with hyphens and or brackets. So that's, um, <laughs> that's a bit of a challenge. Just that is quite tricky. All right, so who should I who should I check first? Um, I think we'll do Mr. DB as we we're in his um, their um, their repo at the moment, and I believe this one is PHP, right? It is, and I probably can just do an open of index.php of index.php and ah. <laughs> oh, I can't be that clever. That's annoying. I'm going to have to run. Oh, of course, I can't do that anyway because I. It's, oh, sorry, my mind is all over the place today. I need to. Um, I've been up too late. That's why. Took for too long. Um, I need to run the local server. <laughs> of course, I do. Uh, let's do eight four here. Okay, let's have a little look and see what we've got. Ah, oh, I like, I like, I like the interface. I never asked for the interface. There was never an interface asked on here, but I like the way people have uh, thought of how they're actually going to display this. If it was just literally commands to run on the command line, that would be perfectly fine. <laughs> Uh, but I like I like this. Um, if I go back to it, there we go. I like it. So we got some links here as well. So uh, this is my submission for the How to Code Well Regex Coding Challenge. Please uh, click a level uh, a level button below to see the respective entry. Very nice and tidy. Let's go for level one. Huh? Nice. It's gone straight to level one. Okay. Number to be validated. Clever. Clever, clever, clever. Yep, 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 yep. That's exactly right. To have the carrot at the front and the um, dollar symbol at the back to denote that that's the start of the pattern and that's the end of the pattern. That is what I was trying to focus on. Number to be validated. If I hit submit, what happens? I... Maybe I, maybe I should just put the number in. Success. The value entered matches the regex pattern. Nice. Now, let me pull this just apart for a second, because you've done some really interesting work here. 
um, with this. Is this, how does this get submitted? It's PHP, but how does this, how does this work? The input here is, is a text input, fine. But how does this, it must be PHP. So let's go up to, let's open up PHP. Is this, uh, is this the actual dev? That's the website. Bear with me a second. I should have got this ready during the stream. What's this called? Code challenges. So, so it's not that one. Is it that one? I, I think it's this one. Because I think these are... Yeah. All right, so that was March. And we need to be... Have I called it August? Why have I called it August? It's not August, it's July. <laughs> Sorry, let me sort this out first. Gosh. I I I needed I need some more sleep, I think. Last night was rubbish, rubbish sleep. Um anyway, so we're on Mr. DB and this is the thing and we've just done level one and level one here okay let's get into the code so we're requiring the index the, the header once fine and then here we're doing um we're getting the request method making sure that it's post um that could be double equals i think data trim uh trimming down the data that's cool nice let's see if um so i guess like whoops I guess it would trim it down, right? So, and I've gone and put a... Submit that. Oh, hang on. What have I done? Have I... No such file or directory on... What? 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 Have I broken it? I think I have. Let me... I do apologise, Mr. DB. I think I've broken... Broken it all. Thank you for following uh, Sleep Lurker. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. You've set the emotes off. Um, I have. Uh, I'm doing a code review at the moment, um, and I'm making a really good effort to break the code <laughs> by not doing much. <laughs> oh, sleep deprivation. There we go. Right back into the game. Level one. Right. So the idea was. I just wanted to test the trim. That's all I wanted to do. And I hit submit. There we go. And come down here. Fail. The value entered does not m match the... R oh, it's because of this, 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 right? Why is that putting in a dot? All right, let's hit... Sorry. Huh. Submit. There we go. That's worked. Because you quite cleverly trimmed it down. Great stuff. Okay, result. Test the regex pattern level one. I like the way you've called that. Test regex pattern level one. Excellent. Um, and then that's the... And you're also echoing out and stripping the tags. Very nice. Very, very nice. A PREG match. That's what you're using. Okay. Cool. And you're matching it upon here. Very nice. Very nice. Let's move on to level two. So how do I get back, get back, back to index? Level two. Okay. Use character classes to check the numbers. You can also use sets if you want. Very clever. So you've got zero to nine. And, you're, and a, a set of three of them. Zero to nine, a set of three of them, and zero to nine, a set of four of them, because we've got four here, three there, and three there, plus you've got hyphens in between, right? So this should be, I should be able to do one, well, first up, right, let's do the one that we should know works. So if we hit submit on this, then we get success. But if I was to change this up, let's say this was one, one, and let's say that that was set, um, sort of six, and then hit submit, that should be the same, right? We should pass, which is good because it means now, I mean, if I was to put in like A in there, that should fail, which it does. Very, very nice. 
Let's see if I can uh, remove, let's let's bring that back to say two. Let's rem remove one of the, uh, the hyphens out. Hit submit, that should also fail as well, which it does. Okay, so what we've got here, what we've got here is this is the pattern that Mr. DB is using. This is the carrot. This is the start of the the pattern, and then the uh, the percentage, not percentage, the dollar symbol. Sorry, that is the end of the pattern. The um, the slashes here denote that this is the regex string, the the regex deliminators, right? And then what what we we're, we're doing is we're splitting. Well, if you if you see it as three separate sections, so this is the first section, this is the second section, and this is the third. So in the first, what we're doing is we're saying, okay, zero to nine, anything zero to nine, but we must have three. Only, we must have three. I couldn't do like that, for instance. That's going to fail um, because we must have three of them and it, they must start from zero to nine. So I could do, for instance, zero, 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 and that should work, which, uh, hang on. Oh, it's because I got a hyphen in between. Sorry. There we go, that should work. Success. Um, in actual fact, I can do 0, 0, 0 on all of them, and 0, 0 on these as well, and this should work too, 0, 0, 0, 0, and hit submit. Um, and also, so that's, that's 3, that's 3, and then this is 4. So this is saying that anything that precedes this needs to happen 4 times, and only 4 times. Um, and then, of course, you've got the hyphens in between to break this up. So this needs to be zero or zero to nine three times, and then a hyphen, and then zero to nine three times, and then a hyphen, and then zero to nine four times. And there we go. So yeah, that really that works well. And I would bet you uh, that that is also using a similar set of logic. Uh, yep, yeah, we're doing a trim and. And other bits and pieces, and then we pass in the pattern here. Um, yeah, awesome. P reg match again. Good. Okay. No worries, sleep lurker. <laughs> you can't plan these things, mate. You can't. You can't. I hope you're doing well. I hope you've had a good weekend. I've had a really good weekend, I, I, you know. Um, so yesterday we went, we, we saw some family, which was something that we haven't done in a long time. <laughs> um, so not my side, um, but um, we saw family, which was great. And then um, uh, today we we did a, a proper like eight kilometer walk with the dog in the forest. Uh, so I am. Um, it's been a good weekend. It's been a very, very good weekend. And also, um, I've eaten a lot of cake and drank a lot of tea, which is <laughs> always a win. Um, um, yeah. So level three then. This is where things start getting a little bit uh, crazy, I think. Um, if we go back to here, back to the index. Um, okay, now simplify the answer using shorthand syntax. So what have we got? Aha! That's cool, and I say crazy because you're this, you are essentially adding um, different symbols here. So this is you, so you start with a slash, then you've got a carrot, then you've got a slash, and then you've got a D. <laughs> Anyone reading this is like what? <laughs> like who who doesn't know regex would be like what on earth does that mean? But essentially D is um, it's, it's uh, dig digits digits. Uh, so I want three digits, I want three digits, and I want four digits, 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 and um, then you have the hyphens. So exactly the same as uh, as before, um, but um, it's shorthand. So if I hit submit on that, that should work too, which uh, is good. Yeah, um, let's go and take a look at the code. I'm sure it's doing uh, the similar set of... Um, trimming and all this stuff I'm, I'm very happy that you've trimmed it down <laughs> and you were um, stripping tags as well that's uh, well thought out sir um, and that's the pattern and that is the pattern yeah 
All right, moving on to level four. Level four is, um, let's rem I'll try and remember what that is, level four. is the grouping. Aha, uh -huh. it's the grouping. Now when you group in regex, you use the, the, the brackets, so the open and close brackets, and whatever is within that group becomes, is the, is the group, essentially. Excuse me. It, it allows you to assign these to variables. So if you were to create um, some sort of like, uh, let's say, uh, mod rewrite rules. So in your HT access or in your vhost, if you were looking for uh, certain segments in a URL, then you could assign these groups to the variables. So let's say, for instance, this was this was uh, category category and then this was product, uh, category shoes, right? So you would know that that, is, that would start with sh uh, category, categories, but this would be like the slug of the category. Uh, and so what you would do is you would look for anything um, after this and anything that has alpha, perhaps alphanumeric, um, up to the next slash. Um, because you might then have, say, pagination. So you might have one, uh, so page one or page, let's say page 10. And then you might also have, say, um, uh, seven items on that particular page. Um, but this is the slug. This is the identifier. So when a URL comes in, you'll be able to group these and say, that's group one, that's group two, that's group three, and that's group four. So group four is the limit. Group three is the page number. Uh, group two is the actual slug of the category. And group one is the category itself. This could also be, say, product. And this could be shoe, like that. But anyway. We didn't do that. We were looking at numbers. Um, uh, that, to me, might be the another challenge in the future. So one, two, three, uh, nine, three, nine. Let's copy all this in. Seven, eight, seven. Let's copy that back in again and hit submit. Uh, yep, that's uh, working fine. Um, I think also what you could do is you could put the uh, the uh, the number. The set inside the group, potentially. Um, let's have a look and see where the code is. What's going on with that? Come on, is it still? Is that using preg? Uh, preg match, yeah. So with preg match, you can you can also supply a variable, um, which is here matches. So, so matches um, matches the subject, the given subject. Um, so, for example, um, <laughs> lots of documentation on this. I want to get to the top. I want to get to the top. Here we go. Here we go. Matches. matches. Um, if matches is provided, then it is filled with the results of the search. So, matches zero will contain the text that was matched, uh, which matched the full pattern. Matches one will have text that ma that match the first captured parentheses, i.e. a group. Um, so for example, and there's an example here, I'm just gonna break this apart, I, I hope you don't mind, but I'm gonna just pull this apart for a minute. Um, let's say for example we have matches up here. And we're gonna set this to a blank array. And then what we do is we pass in matches up here as the third argument and the third argument um, is it's it's an array or it could be null right um, and then instead of returning um, this I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a print uh, pre just so I've got something to show on off on page print r and then a die and we're going to print out matches all right, so if I was to run this in the code again, ah, it's a, I'll have to bring it up. So here, here you can see that you've got the matches three, nine, and eight. So zero, <laughs> zero, I'm gonna have to highlight this, zero is the first string that you've, is the full string that you've matched. And then after that becomes the matches that you've got, the, the, the groups. 
So three, nine, and eight. And I believe that is because if we went back to the code, three, nine, and eight, and eight, that's three, that's nine, and that's eight. But I think if I was to break this for a minute, let me just hack this up. Give me a second, two seconds, whilst I just smash up Mr. DB's code. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, right, let's try that once more. So yeah, now can you see, I've just refreshed the page. Now you can you can you see that we now have the full one, two, three, nine, three, nine, and seven, eight, seven, eight. Um, that is because we, we've we've contained the the set, the number, the the amount of of digits that we were are trying to look for within those parentheses. Um, so um, it, what, what I'm saying here is this is this is fantastic when you're doing mod rewrite and let's say for example these were this was a URL and instead of the hyphens we have we have uh, slashes so that as I said th this could be category that could be the category name and that could be some sort of pagination thing to identify those you would be grouping them in the parentheses and you would also make sure that the rules that you want to look for are within the group so here you would say, well, you know, uh, that if that was category, that was the category name, and then that was the pagination, you would say, well, this is, number one is obviously category. Number two would be the category that I'm looking for. So in this case, in the example I had before, that would be shoes. And then number three would be the pagination. Um, and then you would put that to the controller, and the controller would deal with all of those possibilities off of the root. Anyway, I will um, revert all this. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. To break all your... It's... It, I mean, it, the thing is, you ma you managed to... You managed to do the, the, the test. So, um, you know, the test passed. Let's uh, roll that back for a second. Okay, cool. All right, moving on to level five. This is where it gets a little bit crazy, isn't it? Level five is the is the is the nut job one. So let's go back to the index here. Level five. Yes, you see hyphens, I see brackets. <laughs> what happens if the hyphens are sometimes open and closed brackets like this, <laughs> or like this? Adjust your answer to cope with the hyphens or brackets. Crikey. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> why do I do this? All right, so the reason why I did this is because um, I knew that the brackets themselves would need to be escaped. Um, and to escape, you would need to use the, um, the slashes, the, the backslashes. So you're slashing um, the... <laughs> Let me let me break this up. Right, let me break this up. This is it. Where's that? So that's from there to. I'm trying to work this out. Is it there? That is a single group. <laughs> no, no, no. That's a single group because that has that has escaped that. I'll talk about the the question mark in a minute. That is the digit. That's that's a group itself. That's another group. I want three of those. So again, that could go inside there. And then this escapes the closing bra the closing bracket. <laughs> and then we've got an or symbol. So an or is a pipe. So you're saying uh, it could be that or it could be this. So it could be an escaped uh, closing bracket or it could be a hyphen. <laughs> Oh gosh. And then <laughs> so <laughs> yikes. Um okay, so let's just try it out. <laughs> let's just grab this and then paste this into here and then hit submit. Uh so that worked. Cool. Let's hack this up. Let's say for instance this is going to have um that uh, okay, okay, so that requires that. Does it need, can it, 
can I get rid of it? Alright, so I can't have a hyphen at the start, but I can not have a uh, a break. A uh, 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 curly bracket. Blah, 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 tr losing words. Uh, let's put a hyphen into here. To here. Skip it. Uh, that works. Let's put a... Um, uh, let's cl let's take that off and then hit submit so that worked can I put a hyphen on the end nope that's fine though because um, well it, uh, is it fine I can't do this I shouldn't be able to do this no no but I should be able to do I should be able to do this, right? So if I was to do that and then remove that hyphen, um, I should be able to do that. Should I not? Do I not? Yes. Okay. All right. Whew. Hey, liquid oxygen. Yeah, I'm doing well, thank you. I'm doing very well. <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing doing really really well. Mm. Sun is shining. Um, the dog is very happy. And uh, yeah, I've actually started exercising again because um, I put on a lot of weight due to COVID. And um, it's been a couple of it's been about a week now since I've started just doing a little bit of light exercise. Um, weights and stuff like that and um, I'm starting to eat more healthfully now because before I was working on I was eating uh, a lot of takeaways and stuff um, over you know, you know on the weekends and um, I've 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 exchanged the takeaways for a fruit delivery box so I'm eating healthily I'm exercising um, and we went for a really nice long walk and the sun's out so I'm really happy. I'm, I'm, I'm in a nice place at the moment. Which is good. Um, this is maddening to see, isn't it? I mean, it, it works, but it's just... I mean, that ho the whole thing is just crazy. Um, <laughs> I don't know what kind of mood I was in when I decided to do this. Um, probably something that required... Um, I was not in the mood I am now, let's just say that. <laughs> Alright, so these question marks then, these are optional characters, and these are saying that it's optional on the left hand side, so it's saying it's, it's like a, 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 a look back. Uh, let me, I'm just now, I'm doubting myself, let me just uh, check that. So regex, uh, test, PHP, there's a really great website. Uh, if I can find it. Here we go. Once it loads, and I think below we've got some... Um, ah, it's not actually on here, is it? Oh, that's silly. But anyway, I'll put this in the chat. This is really good for, for regular expressions on the... Uh, on the PHP side of things. I'm looking for, I think, I can't remember whether it's re reverse or forward. I think it's reverse. I just wanna, before I actually say that, I wanna. I think it is reverse look up. Look ahead and look behind. Yeah, it's the question mark. Positive and negative look aheads. That's very weird, something just fell off of my desk. Yeah, for the reason the regex blah 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 never matches one, two, three plus that. First it uh, look around captures one, two, three. Obviously, blah, 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 okay. Skim reading.
So yeah, look ahead and look behind, collectively called look around, are zero length assertions, oh, assertions, sorry, uh, just like the start and end of the line. Um, the difference is that the look around actually matches characters, but uh, then gives up the match, returning only the result. Okay. So it's a negative, is it? When explaining character classes, uh, this tutorial explained why you cannot use neglated, negated character sets, character classes, sorry, to match Q, followed by negative look ahead to provide a solution. So Q, question mark, exclamation mark, U. The negative look ahead construct is a pair of parentheses with an open parentheses followed by a question mark. So it's a negative look ahead. So looking ahead negatively. Um, yeah. Whereas uh, positive look aheads are just the same, but it's question mark equals and then this matches Q that is followed by a U without making uh, the U part of the match. The positive look ahead construct is a pair of parentheses with open opening parentheses followed by a question mark and an equal sign. Okay. Cool. Right. Okay, so let's get back to to it. I mean, yeah, it's a mouthful. It's a mouthful, but I'm glad you got the uh, I'm glad you got the escaping in there too. Uh, just be careful again with the groupings because the you know your if I was to do this again in um, in uh, in here. So if I did level five and then come down to. here and then did another matches matches is equal to an array and then print R or print uh, print uh, yeah print R matches and then let's um, hit die on this and then also let's print pre at the top because it's a website to format that. Right, let's now hit submit again. All right, so yeah, careful of the mat of your matches because um, they they don't really mean mean a lot um, if you were to if you needed to identify these. So be careful of your groupings. I mean, because you're you know, <laughs> and these are going to be very different compared to um, you know what what you supply so yeah that's that's the only point I would make for this but really I mean it's good it's good it's a great um, it's a great set of great set of challenges there that you've submitted I also like this combination that you've got going on here uh, so you can see the the various different bits and pieces that, that are working yeah thanks for that liquid oxygen um, yeah, I think it's uh, it's good. It's good mentally as well. Well, thank you very much, Mr. DB. That was really, um, really good uh, work there. Um, it, 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 this is this is a very difficult challenge. A very, very difficult. It's probably one of the, apart from the, the the game that we that we made, the JavaScript game, um, because that was that was over a whole. You know, several months. Apart from that one, I believe this is probably the most difficult one um, out there so far. So far. Uh, but yeah, thank you for that. We're going to move on to um, the next challenger, and I'm going to just close on to this one and do an LS. And uh, I believe that was the Tilladen, right? So if I LS, yes. And I think this was JavaScript based. Yeah. Okay. Let me. I'm gonna have to replay the. I can't remember what was in the README. Bear with me a second. Uh, something about installing npm and all, the, or using npm to install dependencies. Yeah, that's the one. This has. Um, this has. Uh, uh, <laughs> this has. If I can use my words, this has jQuery, I believe. Um, uh, 
Uh, yes, jQuery and Bootstrap. Okay, let's uh, run this. Let's do an NVM use stable. And then do an NPM I. As mentioned in the uh, the notes. Okay, so now we have our node modules. And now I should be able to run, I guess, if I was to run index.html, that'll, that should, that should produce it, right? I think so. Let's hit uh, open of index.html. Hopefully that, typically it's opened in the wrong browser. There we go. All right, so this is the next challenger, the Tilladen. Um, sweet, so this is um, a, a JavaScript application and it is, um, we can see the, the various different inputs here, I, I believe, and I can put in the various things and and yeah, let's give it a go. So level one, the simplest way, so it exactly matches. So let's put that in. Is that is there going to be a submission? Does that work? I can't see it working. What's going on? And is there a button? How am I missing something? Am I missing something here? No worries, Mr. DB. Um, <laughs> what's going on? Uh, let's let's put something in that is just ridiculous. No, that doesn't work. So, okay, I'm confused. It doesn't look like there's a submit button. I can't see. Let me have a little. Let me have a little look. I'll I'll do a bit of digging. Aha. So we appear to have some some issues. Uh, we are providing data regex. That's clever. Are we doing that on the other ones as well? Yeah, but it doesn't. I can't seem to. There's 10 errors here. Unsafe, a safe attempt. But I don't think that's, I don't think that's an issue. <laughs> let me, uh, let me try and open this again, one more time. No. Ah, that's annoying. Why do I feel like I'm forgetting something? Like, <laughs> so we're doing a console log on something. Um, Ten errors, which are the unsafe attempt to load a URL from the frame with the URL URL. <laughs> uh, five user messages. So this is the the infos. We don't have any warnings. Hmm. Let's have a look at the code. Let's see if I can. Uh, let's uh, let's just do a rollback on this one. Let me see on the code, and let's just just see. I I, I really do think that I'm missing something here. I, I apologise, the Tilladen. I think I think it's my issue. Let me just make sure I'm in the right spot. Yeah, I'm in JavaScript. Um, and it was, it was here, right? If I opened up, up there. There just doesn't seem to be any kind of way of submitting this or any sort of way to run the run the code. Let's put that in. 
Unless, I mean, let's put all them all in, right? So, some examples are 111. And let's say this mix of level here can enter, which looks like XXX, where each. Yeah, so again, let's just put that in. And then put that in. Do I get any results? I can't seem to get anything. Hmm. Right, okay. Okay, so bootstrap's only used for the styling, uh, for CSS, obviously, and then you've got HTML5 shim and responder.js for IE support. Don't need to worry about that. Um, okay, let's have a look at uh, the HTML here. Uh, we've got, so that's, that's the explanation. It's more to do with please enter a number so we do have placeholders and we got described by please enter the number level one add-on the data regex is here there needs to be a starting carrot though I think because we've got an ending um, we've got a data level of one I just don't know what that corresponds to circle then we've got some SVGs, so circle fill. I think these correspond to these things, I think. Um, Miss DB is asking if it's, if it's brought in the dependencies. That's a very good question. Let's do an L, oops. Uh, let's do it. <laughs> At LS, I had my thing in the in the chat. Sorry, <laughs> LS, uh, LS of Node modules. So we do have Bootstrap. We've got the icons and we've got jQuery. Uh, so that worked. However, oh, I'm not in no modules Bootstrap. Yeah. Yeah, the icon's not showing, and I, I um, which kind of means feels to me like it's not actually wired up, or I haven't wired up properly. Uh, so. I really want to get this to work. <laughs> I really want to get this to, to work because this, um, this looks like it's going to be a good challenge. And I can see the amount of effort and time that's been put into this, you know. So it's using, this is an input, right? So input type of text. It's using the class, which is form control. It's got a placeholder, which is into the number. Let's just make sure that that placeholder is, is there. So the placeholder is good. Uh, one, one, one. Let's paste that in. Ah, can you see that things are changing? Can you see up here that things are actually changing? Keep your eye on um, this here. By check circle fill. So if I'm going to remove this, yeah, so this is D underscore done, and if I pass this in, then this changes to circle fill, but the circle isn't displayed. So I'm guessing there's some form of link up with the, uh, the JavaScript that um, isn't quite right. Could it be... No, it brings in the it brings in the the the, uh, the CSS. Okay, 
but uh, it's it's running from the um, it's running from the node icons, right? I'm assuming this is a node icon or a Bootstrap icon, sorry. So that would go in from here, right? So if I open this up, open a new tab. Okay, so that's that's fine. Uh, I can't see the JavaScript actually being added to this. Ah, here's the jQuery. Let's get the, let's open that up in a new tab. So the jQuery's in. Okay, cool. And also index. I mean, we would get errors anyway, right? We would get er errors. Aha. So I'm wondering if, um, I'm wondering, oh gosh, this brings me back uh, to, uh, to, to the good old jQuery days. Uh, may, I, I don't know, have we done a document.load? Or do we need to do that now? I, I haven't used jQuery in ages, so I don't, I don't know. This is, so regex input dot each index element. Um, so we're looping through all elements that have that as the class. We're doing a console.log element. Aha! We did have, I did see that, I did see that. That was, uh, where are we? Uh, I did see that in the console log. It was these. All right, so that's saying to console log that. Let element is element. So element would be off of this, which would be, which would refer back to, oh gosh, um, sorry, I'm going everywhere. These and we've got, so we've got regex input, regex input. I see. So we're identifying the regex inputs by, or the, the the inputs by, by the class. Okay. So that does appear to be working through. Uh, then we're doing we're instantiating a new reg uh, exp, passing in the element data regex. Uh, we, we're using ig. Um, so case insensitive, um, and then on key up, aha, on key up, element dot on key up. So we we don't appear to be firing this, and then we do regex. So what I'm going to do is just debug this, and uh, and just see. So in in here, index.json, this is where we're looking at. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw in some 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 uh, console logging. Let's do debug. Um, and pass that in. I just want to see, and then ELM. What's ELM? Okay, so they get the element off of the ELM. Okay, so that's the event. Sorry, is that right? The event? Am I? Or maybe I'm. I haven't used jQuery in a while. Uh, all right, let's just run this and see. So refresh. The, ah, okay. Now we've got the things in. I needed to do a shift refresh. So one, one, hyphen one one, and it should be three of them. Hyphen one two three four. Why is that not? Oh, I didn't do a shift refresh. Sorry, I, I was, I copied it in before. So there we go. There's a tick. Right. So I'm wondering if the J the jQuery just didn't was just wasn't running for some reason. Anyway, it works now. <laughs> it works now. I think we'll uh, we'll just put this down to. Um, some browser foobar stuff with the with the icons. Um, I can't remember whether I did a shift refresh or not. Um, because if I did a shift refresh, that would clear cache. Although the cache would be cold anyway. Hmm. Meh. Meh. Okay, so they all have. Let's just start this. Let's let's start this on a clean slate. I'm gonna get rid of this. I'm gonna get rid of the U. 
and I'm going to do a shift refresh this time. See, they're still... <sighs> oh, I'm kind of regretting doing that now. Let's load this up again. Right, okay, that was clean. That, that loaded up cleanly. So we'll, we'll just use this tab and I will not change at all. Let's copy this in. There we go. So that works. <laughs> boy, oh boy, oh boy. I don't think this was a fault of uh, the Tilladons at all. Um, I'm just going to put it down to some crazy, weird, funky, bootstrap, Jav, jQuery thing. Um, but it's a good example of... Um, it's a good example of dependencies getting in the way. Groovy. That works fine. Let's do AAA. Good, good, good stuff. Now, what I'm going to do is go through, because I, I believe this is done using the um, the data data regex. And that's getting pulled through. Can you see here? I've, I've put a console logging on here. Uh, and that's getting pulled through. Now, let me think. Because this is HTML5, I believe we can do a HTML5 pattern. instead input patterns so yes you can um, so let me bring that up a little bit more whoa not that far <laughs> there we go can you see so instead of passing this off to JavaScript we could do this within the HTML using pattern so I'm gonna I'm gonna do this I'm gonna break this so instead of I am in the right file. Here we go. So it was this here. We'll do the first one, right? So instead of data regex, we have pattern. And with the pattern, uh, we need to st we, we don't put in the um, the regex eliminators. We just provide the pattern. So, whoops, sorry. Excuse me. Which means we we should be able to run from here. Well, the same actually, the same the same jazz. So I'm going to just copy and remove that, cut that, and then hit save. Um, and then we're going to refresh this page. And I think I need to have a submit button to to actually demonstrate this because it needs to be submitted I think um, but yeah I think I need a submit button let's just <laughs> I'm sorry the Dilladen um, I'm <laughs> I'm uh, I'm gonna create a form in fact what I'll do what I'll do is um, grab this um, I tell you what, let's just let's just create a new file. Put it in here. Let's just call this temp because I'll remove it straight after. And in here, uh, we'll get rid of we'll get rid of some bits and pieces just to make it clean. Um, oh, I should I should use the word clean just to make it a little bit less dependent on other things. So there we go. Okay, so let's create a form just really quickly. Just bash one out. So form. Um, let's do input. Uh, sorry, form type is post. Name is um, temp. Temp like that, and then we're gonna put in an input, and input is gonna have a type of text with a pattern, uh, and that pattern is gonna be. I've actually done it on the index, haven't I? Silly. I didn't mean to do that. But let's just grab uh, this pattern. 
well, it's that, isn't it? I'm gonna, I'll, I will change the, uh, change the files over. Bear with me a minute. Let's just copy that, put it into t uh, temp, and I'll just bung it down here for a second. And we're gonna grab all of this. And put that back where it was. Or I could just do a rollback, but whatever. All right. Um, all right, and then you've got a placeholder stuff. <laughs> and then you'll also have a button. So button or uh, submit. Uh, input type submit value is um, send or something like that something along those lines let's let's just quickly load this up all right so if I hit submit is that how do I get that pattern to work let's just see And also set it as required. Yes. So please match the requested pattern. Uh, yeah, please match the requested pattern. And I think I could pass in a title. Um, and in the title, we could put this in to say please match and then boom I'm going a mile a minute here I do appreciate I, I, I do apologize but I want I, I want to just smash through this and then get to get back to the tillid and stuff because I have gone on a there we go can you see so please match the requested format please match the format <laughs> I can't even spell send please match so you my point <laughs> Oh gosh, my point. <laughs> my point is that you could do this in the HTML. You don't need JavaScript. That's my that's my entire point here. JavaScript isn't needed for this at all. It could just be HTML. Now I have I did say that JavaScript could be used for this, um, but I just as everybody's put in interfaces, uh, you know, GUIs to this, it could just be in HTML. Um, anywho. <laughs> Anywho, um, let me just revert this back to what it was because I don't want to. I, I don't want to um, infect, pollute other people's work with um, with my craziness. So we go, we'll do a rollback on that one, and I'm going to roll back on the JavaScript too. Uh, we'll keep temp in though. Um, okay, so. Let's get back to the. Let's get back to it because the interface is really, really nice, right? Really, really nice. Um, and I do like the fact that we have the, the, the tick and the cross. That's good. Where have they gone? They gone? Here we go. So the ticks and the crosses are good. Uh, so that works. And then this one here is the second. This is character classes. Uh, so you can enter here a number of the following conditions so three digits from one to three minus which is the the hyphen uh three digit digits one to three or not th uh three sorry digits of three or nine okay then minus then four digits of seven or eight okay i don't quite follow that to be fair so that's an example. Can I do four, 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 and four? Ah, right. Okay. I think I think you've misunderstood the question here, the the challenge, which was on level two, which was character classes. Use character classes to check for the numbers. You can also use sets if you wish. Um, 
th this is a little bit more clever than what I was anticipating. Um, if I can find the tab. <laughs> no, it's not that one. <laughs> it's not that one either. It's this one. Um, yeah, so I think uh, I think this one's a little bit uh, too, too complicated. Let's have a look at the, this pattern. Okay, one to three with three, and then three to nine, three. I'm not sure why that happened. I'm not sure why you did that, the teller did I don't, I don't know why that was done, but you, you, I can see you've actually put in, yeah, I can see you've used character classes, which is good, but I, I don't understand what the three and the nine mean on here. I think it's three to nine here. Yeah, okay. All right, moving swiftly on. So this is now shorthand. So I guess I could have a look at this and just have a look at the uh, here. Yes, so you've got the Ds. <laughs> and you've put them in um, in uh, in brackets, which is good. In uh, square brackets, which is good. That's cool. In a set. So we should do A, B, C. No, one, two, three, hyphen, one, two, three hyphen one, two, three. No, four. Why is that? What's going on? One, one, one. That's, eh? Ah, I see what's going on here. Okay, so there's no, um, there's no set amount. Um, and so this is only gonna be looking for one. This is only going to be looking for one number, so this means that that probably won't work. Yeah, and this probably won't work either. Yeah, because this is based on a single D. Um, I'll bring it out so here to show you. So, where are we? Shorthand. And it's this, yeah. So, t t to solve that, it would be like, as Mr. DB has done it would be like three here and then three there and then uh, four like this and then you would put them in brackets to group them up which is the, n the next challenge and I think also you don't need to put in the square brackets Let me, I'll just try this out uh, there's one, there's two, and then let's get rid of this. Right, let's give that a blast. Um, using the, jar the JavaScript, so I'll, I'll refresh here. Um, right, so it was this one. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Yes! Okay, so yeah, it, you, you just needed to put in the, 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 the number in which those numbers, the number in which those numbers, the number in which those characters can um, have. So, for instance, three uh, digits, three digits, and then four digits. Okay, moving on. Uh, group those numbers. So that is essentially what I've just done <laughs> with the grouping. So let's put that, that in here, and we can see that's ticked. So I'll, I'll just take a look at the uh, that off of here. Yes, that's... Ah, no, okay, yeah, sorry, no, this isn't groups, um, scroll down here, so the grouping would be in those brackets, so you would have, so you would do this, essentially, it's just, it's the, it's the, um, it's what I've just done above, <laughs> essentially, uh, but again, as I mentioned with Mr. DB, um, by putting them in the groups means that you can then assign these to um, uh, to variables, which is super handy for um, mod rewrite. Okay, so after that, we then have this um, craziness. You see hyphens, I see brackets. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's run this and see. Yeah, we got a tick on that one. Let's run that one too. Awesome. All right, let's have a little gander and see where uh, where this is. 
Okay, so it's reasonably similar to the other one. It's this here. All right, so instead of using um, look-aheads, uh, we are using um, or statements, I believe. If I can read that right, yeah. Or statements. Yeah. Okay. So we escape that. There isn't. There isn't a requirement here for the hyphen. So that would have fail if I put in a hyphen. Um, and then that would be an escaped DB. See, that's in a set. And then that would be an escaped bracket. Yeah, so that, so you've put that into a set, and then oh, into a group. Sorry, oh, I shouldn't say set group. You put that into a group, and then this one here, you've got an or or a. So you've got a bracket that's escaped, or a hyphen, and then you've got the digit. Then you've got three, and then you've got, and then here is a set. And here is a set. Okay, I see what's going on. Okay, so in your set, you're saying this set could either be a a bracket or a hyphen. I get that. That, that. that makes sense. That's good. And then again, you've got that here. And then here you've got a... Uh, uh, Escaped, that's the word I'm trying to look for, an escaped bracket. Yeah, okay, all right. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, 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 okay. Again, I would be careful about the groupings. Um, and also, I would just say, like, I really do appreciate these GUIs. Um, you know, but I don't think J jQuery was required. And I, you know... If it was just HTML5, it would have been, it would have been fine. Um, and also in the JavaScript, excuse me, um, where we've got the do, do exe stuff. What are we, how are we doing that? Element regex. Okay, so we are doing the eval. We are doing a, reg a, a match dot match. Okay, so we are using the JavaScript way of regular expressions. Fine. Okay. And then we're swapping the icon. Okay. Careful with the variable names. Cool. Well, you know, there were two really, really good challenges this like I said this is this is an awfully difficult challenge to do a really difficult challenge and I, I really appreciate it so thank you both mr. DB and the Tilladen for doing these things I really appreciate it um, we're gonna be um, we're gonna be doing a Python challenge next um, <laughs> so this is uh, this is something that I wanted to do for a while we haven't done a lot of Python um, on the streams, but I've done a lot of Python on the on the YouTube channel, and so I wanted to have some Python on the streams. I think what I'm going to do is grab a cup of tea, and then I'll come back, and then I'll go through that challenge. But yeah, because this my tea is very cold. Let me just double check something a minute. I don't know why that's. Uh, Go on to that playlist. <laughs> there we go. Ah, cool. I'm gonna grab a cup of tea, and then I will. Uh, I'll be back with the Python challenge, um, which is in in here. I'll bring this up on the on the page whilst I go as I go. So we need to get into the August routine. Uh, August. Check that out. SRC. This is the Gatsby website for the code challenges. And I believe it is in Markdown 2020 and it is now in August. So this is the one I did 
late last night. Or, well, I, I, I already I knew what I was doing, but I scripted it up. So I'll leave that on screen whilst I get a cup of tea. And uh, Liquid Oxygen has asked, what kind of tea? Um, Yorkshire tea. Yorkshire tea. Um, yeah, Yorkshire tea. So I'm going to grab some Yorkshire tea, and I will be back in a couple of minutes. So I'll leave that on there for you to read, and then I'll go through this uh, as uh, when I get back. I'll see you in a moment.
apologies for that. Got a cup of tea. Um, God, I'm getting old. Right. So, Python challenges. I don't think, have we ever done a strictly exclusive Python challenge on this before? I don't think we have. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll uh, is I'll run the I'll build the website first, uh, just to give you a a website to look at. So we go to How to Code Well, and we do code challenges. There we go, and we're in that branch. That's great. And it's Gatsby. So if I did Gatsby develop. And essentially, there's three challenges here. Um, and they're based on tuples, sets, strings, um, and dictionaries. Okay. Warning data is assigned a value but never used. Okay. May have to look into that. So, oops helps if you're on the right um, browser. There we go. Let's spin that back a bit so you can see. Okay, so these three Python challenges focus on tuple sets, dictionaries, and strings, as I've just mentioned. Uh, create a GitHub repo with a Python file per level. Submit your GitHub repository to the Discord channel. Um, I will that should be Discord server. Uh, I will review these live on Twitch at the end of August. Okay, so level one. How many times is one duplicated in this tuple? So one, one, two, three, uh, four, one, five, six, seven, and one. So I would like a Python file that when I run, I get a count of one, two, three, four. So you're going to take that tuple and you're going to find how many times one is duplicated. So you should run it and it should output four. Okay, level two. Find the max and min in a Python set. So this is a Python set. <coughs> Excuse me. And I want to find, I want to print out the maximum and the minimum number in here. So. Uh, the minimum would be 8 and the maximum would be 32. So write some Python routine that will go over this set and find the minimum and maximum. Now there is a sneaky way to do this. I'll just, I'll, I'll just say find the minimum and maximum again. <laughs> Okay, and then the next one, which is uh, the, the, the difficult jobby, well, they're all pretty tricky to be honest, but this one is a, is, is a, a, diff a tricky one. Create a function that counts the characters in the string, row, row, row your boat. Um, the function should return a dictionary where the index is the character and its value is the counter. So for example, this is a dictionary in Python. Uh, dictionaries in Python are, of course, uh, have allow you to have strings as their indexes, uh, whereas tuples and others you can't. So, uh, so that's a, a dictionary, and where we can see the character of R has a count of three. So, one, two, three. Whereas boat or B, sorry, has a count of one. So we've only got one B there. So if, for instance, you would have O, so that would be one, two, three, four, five. You would have A, which would be one. You would have T, which would be one, and so on and so forth. I'm going to, um, this is the first time I've actually ran the, the, the website to actually see what this looks like. And I, I, what I'm going to do is just break this up a little bit, just to give it a little bit more... Um, you know, just to pat it out, pat it out a wee bit. Uh, so, for instance, um, 
what I was looking at was this this thing here. Row, row, row your boat. If we can have that on a separate line. There we go. And then change that to say for example. So create a function that counts the characters in in the string in the in the string row 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 your boat. The function should return a dictionary where the index is the character and its value um, is the counter is its counter. And I'll just put down here so R um, is there three times is in the string is found is found in the string three times uh, B is found in the string once one time and so on Okay, um, and again, I'm going to split this out to so say set down here, because that is how you create a set in Python by having by using the set routine. Print the max and min numbers in this set. Uh, so, for example, uh, it would be eight, or for example, eight and 32. Um, okay, how many times is one duplicated in this tuple? Uh, again, we're going to put the tuple down here. And this is going to be for example. One, two, three, four. One is in the string four times. Cool. I think that I think that clears that up a, a wee bit. Um, I'm also going to put in a link. I will review these live on Twitch. I'll put a link to Twitch here as well. So HTTP S wub 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 Twitch can't spell it dot TV forward slash how to code well. Woohoo! Uh, okay, so that's a link now, and I'm going to put this on a separate line as well, and I'll put this on a separate line too. Submit your your GitHub repository to the Discord channel, and what's the channel called? It's Coding Channel Challenges. Is it Coding Challenges or Coding Challenge? Woo! Let's get that, move that away for a second. It is... I never remember. It's coding challenges to the coding challenges. We're going to create a can't spell server server We'll create a link to how to code well dot net forward slash discord. And we're going to put in an invite code to here, which I'm just going to grab.
Okay. There we go. Cool. Okay, these three Python challenges focus on tuples, and I'll capitalize that. Tuples, sets, and uh, dictionaries, and strings. Create a GitHub uh, repo. Pause it, Tori. Uh, with a Python, Python file per level. Submit your GitHub repository to the Coding Challenges channel in the, in the How to Code Well Discord server. Okay. Um, I will review these live on Twitch at the end of August. Level 1. Find the duplicates in a Python tuple. How many times is one duplicated in this in, in the following tuple. So that would be one, two, three, and four. For example, one uh, is in the string four times. Okay. It, it's in the string? No, it's in the tuple four times. It's not the string. It's in the tuple four times. Level two, find the max and min in of of a Python set. So print the max and min numbers of this set. So the set is 15, 11, 8, 15, 32, and 20. So for example, uh, 8 and 32. Okay, level 3, create char uh, count characters in a string. So create a function that counts the characters in... Create a function that counts the counts the characters in the string row 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 your boat so the function should return a dictionary where the index is the character um, and its value is the character count I think that makes a bit more sense in my head uh, although my I'm spelling character wrong. <laughs> Give me a second. Ah, okay. <laughs> Okay, and then for example, R is three, B is one. R is found in the string three times. So one, two, three. B is found in the string one time. So B is there. Now I could have really trolled everybody, <laughs> but I, I decided not to. I could have said like, I could have created a string where you would have an uppercase and a lowercase. And so technically, technically they would be different. <laughs> but but I, I I decided against it. I just thought, row, row, row your boat. So you've got all uppercase R's. So for instance, if I was to troll, I would have done that. <laughs> because then you would have a capital R is two, lowercase R is one. But we're not, I'm not, I don't feel that nasty. <laughs> um, yeah, so in theory, yeah, Mr. DB saying in theory it seems straightforward though, though, um, not using Python. Um, yeah, well, yeah. So, I guess the first thing to do is understand what a tuple, what a set is, a dictionary, and a string. That would be the first thing I would do because this isn't JavaScript, this isn't PHP. Um, these things are incredibly different. Um, incredibly different. Um, so get a get a handle on what these are. Like what is a tuple? What is a, a dictionary? Um, that kind of thing. And then um, go about sort of playing with those, creating those, um, updating them if you can. Um, 
and then yeah just give it a, give it a whirl but as always if you've got any questions then ask in the in the coding help um channel and um it's i kind of done this i mean i could have gone a little bit further with this there's only three cha three levels here i could have gone much further um, but I thought because we haven't done Python before, this was this is a sort of a a gentle way in. And what I would love is for people on the Discord server who have just done like specifically one language, say PHP for the back end or JavaScript, to get a feel for how other programming languages um, do these things. Um, I love Python. I'm a PHP developer. I, I get paid to write PHP code. Um, I've done I've done a, a paid gigs before with Python, but there isn't as much Python work where I am at the moment compared to PHP. Um, but it's always interesting to f see what 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 shade of green the grass is on the other side, if that makes sense. So yeah, I what I'll do I'll save that and I'll put this on to. Let's get, yeah, here we go. Here we go, so I'll go through these again. Okay, so these three Python challenges focus on tuples, sets, dictionaries, strings. If you don't know what these are, first up, whoops, sorry. If you don't know what these are, then I would highly recommend looking into these, seeing what the difference is between a tuple and a dictionary is. And whilst you're at it, also have a look at what the difference is between a list is and a dictionary and all, all those other things. Um, you know, there's no such thing as a tuple in PHP. Uh, okay, these three Python challenges focus on tuples, sets, dictionaries, and strings. Create a GitHub repository with a Python file per level. Submit your GitHub repository to the Coding Challenges channel uh, in the How to Code Well Discord server. I will review these live on Twitch at the end of August. Uh, level one, find the duplicates in a Python tuple. So this is a tuple. Uh, how many times is one duplicated in the following? Out the following. So uh, create an output that just says one. <laughs> I mean, don't write. Just you know, obviously write code that identifies that there is one. Uh, one is found in the tuple four times. So you're basically looking at this tuple, and you're identifying which one. And I bet you could think of how you would do this in PHP, right? You would use something like array, array count or something, count values, to, to count the values, how many times those values are in there, right? But we ain't playing PHP. <laughs> and then here, level two is find the max and min of a Python set. So this is a set. So first of all, understand what a set is and then um, from here, work out whether which one is the lowest and the highest number. And if you haven't used uh, Python before, you'll be uh, hopefully very surprised and gladly so of how Python does this. Um, which, you know, I, I really like Python as a scripting language, really do. For example, 8 and 32. So 8 would be the minimum and 32 would be the maximum. And then level 3, count the characters in a string. So row, 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 row your boat is the string that we're, we're going to look for. And I, I would like you to count each character and turn that into it or create a dictionary, output a dictionary where you have the character and then it's count. So R, 3, B, 1, and so on and so on. Cool. I'm super happy we got um, Python on here. If I have a look back at the other challenges, right? So we've got um, JavaScript, CSS, HTML, JavaScript, CSS, HTML, JavaScript, CSS, HTML, PHP, JavaScript, HTML, PHP, JavaScript, HTML, PHP, CSS. <laughs> and then all the same up until the last one, which was June, which was JavaScript, uh, Python and PHP and, uh, and, and then this one. I think well, I don't know where July's gone, but uh, yeah. So yeah, that's um, that's that's the challenge, Python challenge. Of course, I am up for suggestions. If you've got any suggestions at all on future challenges, then do let me know. Uh, do let me know on the Discord server, and we'll we'll discuss them. Um, 
And also, if you've got any questions, certainly if you've got any questions on this, then please, please ask. Don't struggle. Don't str- I don't want anybody in the Discord server struggling. Um, let's, I will, I will, that needs to be in a second paragraph. There we go. All right, I will, um, I'll push these up. Let's go over to here. Let's come out of this for a minute. Well, let's go into, they all. What have I got? The modified. Git add. Git commit um, minus m. Adding. I kept spelling August the other day with an e. What a, what a nutter. Uh, I just want to double check something. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, I should have hub on this. Oh. Is up to date with origin feature August. Okay. I mm. uh, might have to just do this through here. just want to do a push. That's all I want. All right. Cool. Do you, can I do a pull request then from this point? Or do I have to do a I've gone and totally forgotten the commands for a hub. What is P? I thought I was logged in. I thought, bear with me a minute, I've got to sort this out. I thought I was logged into Git. Just show me the repositories. what it was crying about. Okay. Mm-hmm. Looking good, looking good. Let's get rid of the branch. So it's re- re- rebuilding at the top here. So if we go back to the browser, uh, not that one, not that one, not that one. Get, uh, just remove. 
remove some of this stuff. Aha, local host. So yeah, okay, so now that's uh, that's put through on the homepage. So we've got June. I think, why is that July and why is that June? <laughs> What's with that? <laughs> What's with that? There's something something fishy going on here. Let's do a git, um, not in there, in here. Um. What am I doing? Git, uh, git checkout, hyphen B. I don't think it needs a hyphen features, and this would be uh, month July. Fix. There we go. Okay, um, so ha why is that July? There's July. <laughs> and it's July. That makes sense. July 20, 2020, July. That's good. So why on earth is that June? <laughs> <laughs> Don't understand. If we go to how to code well, we got August. We should have July here. Click on June. That goes to July. I don't, I don't follow what's going on april march june go back to home june july so there's something wrong here is it the date yes the date's wrong that should be seven so in august that should be eight in July, that should be seven. And we didn't do one from June, I don't think. We did April, we did May, we did June. No, we didn't do June, we did July. Yeah, okay, all right. So if I go back to here, sorry about all this. All right, so we got July, click on July, and that goes to July. Let's go to here and we got August, July. That's that's better. That's better. So May is May. July. Okay, good. <laughs> it's crazy, crazy few minutes there. Sorry. Git um, status. Where are we at? Uh, Git add and then Git status once more. Git commit minus M. Fixing dates. Uh, git push. Yeah, Mr. DV, totally was reading from the wrong thing. Uh, what is the current? Use P to push the branch. Oh, yeah. Fixing dates. Um, looks good to me. Let's just come out of this, push it up. Good, good, good. Uh, we have a pull request, which is 43. 43. Fixing dates. in progress. Come on, Netlify. 
Um, what, the other thing that I want to do today is create a section on this website that has um, a, a, a sort of a, a section on how to how to submit your challenge, because we all know how to submit the challenge, right? Because I talk about it every time we do the challenges. But to, to anyone just landing on this website, you know, because I, I I tweet these things. Um, for anybody who's landing on the website from the t from from the Twitterverse, will be like, "What do I do? What do I do?" Hence, why I added a little bit more um, description into here. But really, I want this into a page, and also I want to have a link as well that has on this left-hand side to go to the get to latest challenge. So, for instance, there's no way at the moment to get to August unless you click on the homepage. Um, anyway, what's, um, what's Netlify doing now? Is it, is it all good? Yeah, merge. Thank you. Confirm. So that's what we're going to, um, smash through in a minute. So we're going to delete that branch. Okay. So, uh, and in theory, if we went to here, yes. So this is live. So all the changes that I'm doing right now, they're, they're, they are pushing this live because it's on Netlify. So um, that's cool. So the August challenge is up. Woo! August challenge is up, everybody. Have fun. <laughs> uh, right. I'll put this in the, li in, the, in the thingy. In the thingy thing. You know what I'm talking about. That thing. <laughs> um, okay, that's done, and I want also like to go to issues. Let's have a look. What have we got? Add a list of previous challenges to the current current challenge page. That's done, isn't it? Add a list to the of of previous challenge challenges to the current challenge page. The current challenge page is the home page. Previous challenges are here. So yes, that is done. I think we need to do a little bit of a wee bit of tidying up. Um, why is that a waiting triage? I completed. Off it pop. <laughs> done. Close the issue. That's done. Okay, so that's closed. Um, I need to look into that. How to submit section. That's what we were talking about. Uh, warning when running Gatsby develop. That was the issue that we saw, and also adding the how to code well logo. Yeah, there's a fair amount to do here. So add a how to submit section. This section should explain that the code challenges should be submitted to the Discord server with a link to the GitHub profile. Profile. I did this on the 26th of December um, last year. So um, added this to the V2 milestone. Uh, yeah, projects. Well, let's have a look. What is the V2 milestone? Code challenges. Um, fix favicon. Add the logo. Add the standard for to add. fix that. So have I not? Have I not put this into phase two? Two. It's an enhancement. Projects waiting for triage in progress. That's what we're going to work on. All right, so that's what we're going to play with today. So it's um, uh, number tw number twenty four. <laughs> twenty four. So let's create a, a git checkout. B. We'll do features, and this is how. To submit section, and essentially, I need not a. I guess it's going to be a page. Yeah, I guess it's going to be a page. Um. Hmm. In templates, in the blog template. I don't know why I put it blog template. I think it was just off of a, an example thing that I did. Uh, what I would like to do. Lots of things to fix. Um, 
So this is the this is the left hand side. This is this stuff, or the right hand side. Sorry, that's the right hand side. Previous challenges. So I, essentially, I need to create another set here, and this is going to be. How to submit. Unless, unless it wasn't a page, unless it was just a couple of lines in, in each one of these things. Which means that um, it would go in this block. So you got video review, which is oops. So if I clicked on this one, you'll have the video review coming soon. So maybe we should have a section underneath saying just saying how to submit. So it's not actually a separate page, it's just on each one of these things. I don't know. What if they're different though? Yeah, what if, yeah. What if I have to change it one day? Yeah, okay, that's not a good idea. So let's create, let's, let, let, let's create a page. Let's create a page. Um, so I will do it as a link. So not here, how to submit. I don't really wanna put a link on here because it's gonna make this crowded. So this is challenges, challengers. I need to sort that out because that needs to be a list of the challenges that we've had today. Um, but let's say like here we would have how to submit. But really, do we only need to do this on the home page though, on the current challenge? All right, I'm gonna just create a page. I'm gonna create a page. I'm gonna create a page in here. We're just gonna call this um, sort of how to submit. And in here, it's going to be that's the home page, isn't it? We don't need anything to do with. Um, GraphQL. How to submit page is what we'll call this uh, piece of React. We don't need that. Um, which means we don't need any of this. Which means we don't need any of this either. not posts so we don't need those and we don't need that so we don't need these these uh, okay is there a way I can is there a way SEO in me, it would be submit your code <laughs> or how to submit your code, how to submit your code. All right, so 
how are we getting on with the old uh, how to submit no such file or directory okay let's just come and do that again I haven't updated this in terms of packages for a long time so we're probably going to get some interesting things later down the line I'm going to have to put in a task to update the site uh, okay right so let's go back to here refresh the page go to there go to how to submit your code Um, so that would be code, it would be essentially codechallenges.howtocodewell.net forward slash how to submit your code. Yeah, how to submit your code. Yeah, that, that'll do, that'll do. All right, so then we've got the submit your challenge button here, which we don't need. Actually, what we do need is some text. So we would have text here. Um, so we would have a H1, how to submit your code. Let's not do this in capitalized. I'm trying to get rid of all of that. How to submit your code, put in a paragraph tag, um, all code challenges should um, or to submit your code for review um, create a github repository ah, I can't spell I swear I just button bash <laughs> half the time uh, to submit your code code for review create a github repository um, that holds your challenge or per challenge per and um, post the github the GitHub repository mm. link to the um, how to code well, and we're going to call this HTCW. HTCW, and put that into brackets. Uh, coding. Cha I think we challenges. Coding Challenges uh, channel on the Discord server. On the two repository, I can't spell repository again. Uh, post the GitHub repository link to the Coding Challenges, I think this is lowercase. Coding challenges. Ah, where did the C come involved? Challenges channel on the How to Code Well Discord server. Sweet. There we go. Right, let's uh, let's add some linkages. that should be link do we not have link I thought we had a link import huh do we have anything in post link yeah link that's what I need that's what I need 
So this is going to be on the HTCW. Although this is an internal, this is an external link, so that's not actually going to be a thing. So no, we don't need a link. <laughs> ha! Lols. Yeah, that needs to be a tag. Because it's an external thing, href. Um, and that will be the same as this thing. Do a uh, target. Oops, out of there, of course. Target, and then we'll do a blank. Cool. Okay, and we'll also put in the invite. No, I'll leave that as is. I think. I think. And then submit your challenge as just a button. I mean, that's fine. And then for every challenge, we link to this. So what I would do is in the um, in the blog template, I really need to rename that. It's not a blog. <laughs> um, is uh, that's it's a, this is a template per challenge so yeah so challengers um, we need to put in This would be a link. So this would be uh. <laughs> this would be import. I could do it from here, can't I? GraphQL and then link. There we go. Link to and this would be how how to submit your code and then here we just have um, I think what I'm going to do, thinking about this, because we should have, we should have on each page, if we go to here, we should have a submit your challenge here. So I wonder if, if that goes to that page, that how to submit. Yeah, that to me sounds more sensible. So. Is this on every single one? So if we go to March, no, it's only on the it's only on the current one. Okay, uh, so that would be an index. So it would be current challenge. And we click on that. I'm going to change this to be a link. <laughs> I need to get ESLint running on this, don't I? Um, and we're going to change 
that to be two. And this is going to be how to submit your code. And instead of this, submit your challenge. Oh, I don't know now. Now I've done that, I don't know. I'm not sure. Submit your challenge. Maybe I should call this how to. How to submit your challenge. So you click on that and it goes to here and then you go submit your challenge and that goes off to the Discord server. Meh. Yeah, all right, all right. How to your challenge, what am I talking about here? <laughs> how to submit your code. How to submit your code. Your coding challenge. All right, let's see if we can play with some of this. Um, so inline block border, blah, 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 blah. Can we change the color? Because I don't like the fact that it's just that. Can we change that to be, what have we got? Inline border rounded. That doesn't seem to be pulling off of the, off of that, does it? If I did say, um, text red 500 is that going to change the text red 500 no so something is overriding this I've got a feeling this is because of the um, we had a there was another issue remove tailwind I think there's a problem with tailwind configuration with this I'm using a yeah it's gonna be annoying. All right. Well, we've got that page up, so we've got a how, sub how to submit section. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we're making a bit of headway. That's cool. That's cool. On the coding challenges channel on the Discord server. How to submit, how to submit your code. For review, that's what I should say. How to submit your code. How to submit your, how to submit your, here we go. How to submit your code for review. All right, to submit your code for review, create a GitHub repository um, per challenge. Um, and post the GitHub repository link to the Coding Challenges channel on the um, HTCW Discord server. The challenges, the, um, the code will be reviewed for each challenge will be reviewed at the end of the month at the end of the month um, uh, live on Twitch and I'm going to put in another ahref to uh, HTTPS, uh, and this is, well, we could do how to code well, I don't know, do we, is this running? I can't remember if I've got this running or not live. I doubt this is running. I very much doubt this is running. No. It would help if I could spell my own website. <laughs> Is
Is this run? Oh, it is running. Okay, that's good. All right, we'll do that. Good o. <laughs> uh. I totally forgot I did that. So, okay, so at the end of the munch, uh, munch? At the end of the month on uh, live on Twitch. Whoa! <laughs> live on Twitch. Okay, so we'll save that and then we'll refresh. To submit your code for review, create a GitHub repository per challenge and post the post the GitHub repository link and, and post a link to the my English right to submit your code for review create a GitHub repository per challenge to submit your code for root oh, yeah yeah and post and post the GitHub and post the link to the the link to the I'll post the link to the to the GitHub repository. Uh, there's too many to these. <laughs> was that all right as it was? To submit the code code to submit your code for review, create a GitHub repository per challenge and post the GitHub repository link to the coding challenges channel on the How to Code Well Discord server. Full stop. I am then going to. that okay each challenge will be reviewed at the end of the month live will be reviewed live on twitch at the end of the month that's what I should say so we're gonna remove that each challenge will be reviewed live at the end of the month And I should probably have a link to the latest challenge as well. So we'll put another P tag in here. Um, so check out. Um, uh, let's create a button. Can we do that? There we go, submit your challenge. Can we put that button into here? Actually, no. Let's not bother. Let's just let's just write this. Um, take a look at the latest coding challenge. Take a look at this month's at because it's a monthly thing. This month's coding challenge and this is just going to go back to the home page isn't it so we should do take a look at this month's coding challenge at this uh, so that again this is a link have I not I thought I did no I didn't um, import link from Gatsby, thank you. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Where did that go? Here, link. Uh, so two, and then this would be index, I think. Yep. All right, let's see. How did that work? So click on that. No. <laughs> Is it index page? No. All right. How do I get back to the home page? Is it capital I? It, it, I thought it was just index, but perhaps not. Pages is index. No, it's not. Could I just do... I don't think I can, but can I just do that? I thought it, I had to... There we go. Okay, fine. It's done. All right, so how to submit your coding challenge. Boom, 
this, take a look at this month's coding challenge. Boom. That's cool. Uh, live on Twitch goes to howtocodewell.net forward slash live. This goes to howtocodewell forward slash dot net forward slash discord. And then submit your challenge goes to the discord as well. Submit your challenge now. Now. <laughs> all right. All right. I would really love to sort out the these, <laughs> the buttons that aren't really buttons at the moment. Um, all right. I think we've done a ton of stuff and I think I need to um, get status. Not in that terminal. In this one. Get status. What have we done? Git add. All the things. Uh, git commit. Hyphen M. Adding um, how to submit section. All right, git push. Oh, hang on. Set mode. How um, added adding section. Escape right and quit. Up we go. Off you pop, and then create that pull request. Pull requests. Pull requests. Pull requests. Pull requests. Adding section. Uh, it's all good. Merge and pull. Boom. Go to issues. That's done. I can remove that. I should have put in a hash and then a, you know, the tag. But I didn't. So that's completed. And uh, we can close that off. So, if we go to how to code well now. And I'm, I probably have to wait a couple of minutes for it to do the deployment. Deployment. Ah, uh, I'm quite looking forward to this challenge. This how this uh, Python challenge. It's um, it's nice to be able to have a diverse amount of content, like programming languages. Jumping from HTML, JavaScript, CSS, Python, PHP. Um, yeah, it's, it's nice to be able to dip your toe into various things. So we'll, we'll see. Has that... Um, no. Hasn't uh, pushed up yet. Um, yeah, this thing is going to take a bit of time um, to do because it's to do with the fact that I'm pulling in from our open source um, UI library and it that, that needs a version bump because it's doing some crazy stuff which I don't need um, and it's overriding these styles so uh, that's going to take a wee bit of time to play with. I just want to, I just want to make sure that this is actually going up. Submit your no, it hasn't, it hasn't gone up. It's not a caching thing, is it? Hey, there we go. How to submit your coding challenge? Click on that. This is live, so I've just pushed this live. How to submit your code code for review? To submit your to submit to blah 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 to submit your code for review, create a GitHub repository per challenge and post the GitHub repository link to the coding challenges channel on the How to Code Well Discord server. 
Each challenge will be reviewed live on Twitch at the end of the month. Take a look at this month's coding challenge. So if I click on this, we should get to this month's coding challenge. Woo! Um, something else I want to do is, um, whilst I'm whilst I'm playing with this, is when we click on one of these things, like say someone's reviewing the marches one, for instance, and you can see the YouTubes and all of this stuff. So this will be on YouTube. Um, the August one and the July one. There is no way to actually go back to the current challenge, um, and the current challenge is on the homepage. So there's no way of going back to that apart from clicking on here. But who's going to know what that does, right? Um, so I'm thinking that we need to have a link like down here, just to say go to current challenge, which just takes you back to the homepage. So, yeah. We don't need it on the homepage, <laughs> which would be index, which would be uh, this one. We, but we do need it on the blog template because the blog template is the template for each one of these. Um, and I also need to deal with the videos. So some of the I'm a, I'm quite behind in my video uploads of the vods because they do take a a, a wee bit of time. So we've got the Christmas one here. So I do need to do, obviously, July one. That's going to happen uh, in the next few weeks. May needs to happen. Um, April. April needs to happen. Jeez. March. March is in. March is in. Okay, so we've got uh, a couple of months to, to put on. And I need to also submit the on July the challenges. Let's do that first, because then that wraps up this challenge, doesn't it? So the two challenges, challengers, sorry, that we had today was um, the Tilladon and Mr. DB. So um, we will do that. I'm going to um, create a pull request again. So we'll go over to wherever, wherever this is, go to coding challenges, go to issues. Create a new issue. Add challenges. Challengers for um, July. And also, whilst we're at it, so let's go projects. Pop, pop, pump that into there. Whilst we're at it as well, uh, we will also create another issue. See, the thing that I really like about Jira, and I don't really like Jira, but the thing that I really like with Jira is when is there is a tick box to say, create another issue. And then when you tick that tick box and you say, create another issue, all of your various things are um, set. Uh, so, for instance, if I did a new issue, I'm going to have to now go back and click on this one, click on the, click on this one. Click on you. Click on this one. Click on you. Come on. Click on this one. And click on you. Um, yeah. Anyway. So I would like to list the previous set. So that was July, May, and April, wasn't it? We didn't have one for uh, the videos I'm talking about. We didn't have one for uh, April. We didn't have one for May. And we don't have one for July. However, I'm, the way the Twitch affiliates are, and the rules on that, you can't you can't immediately upload a broadcast after it's been broadcast. You have to wait. So that won't happen. So May and April. So it will happen, but it won't happen straight away. So May and April. And if anybody's watching this on YouTube, when it does come out, hello. <laughs> uh, so it's April and May. So we'll put that into here. Add April and May videos. Otherwise, I mean, I won't forget, but I'll, if I've got an issue, I'm, I'll be, you know, I'll be on it. Um, all right. So the one that we were, I want to play with is uh, the challenges for, challengers for July, all right? So we're going to go get, um, check out, and uh, we'll check out master. 
and we'll do a git uh, pull. And we'll do a git uh, check out hyphen b features um, July challengers. Alright. So, the way this works is in July we have a list of challenges like this. Now these are the links, if I had a look at, let's say, March, these will be the links to the particular repositories. Um, so I need to find them. <laughs> so give me a second whilst I do that. These would be on our Discord servers. If I go to the coding challenges, we have, first up, we've got um, Mr. DB 303 so put that in and then also we have another one which is uh, the Tilladen if I find that find that here we go July challenge and I've got some funky little code that will um, Come on, there we go. So in July, a funky little bit of code that will get the, that will pull out the GitHub profile avatars. So, for instance, if I go to um, say December, uh, you see that. Um, oh, I, I, trust me to pick a username that I can't pronounce. And Ad Ad Cesario Zero <laughs> has that. Uh, May so you can see that uh, Elimia. Um, and uh, others that have different GitHub profiles. So if you use your profile um, a lot in GitHub and you've got a profile po photo, then it will be pulled. So this is abandons. Uh, yeah, which I, I was pretty chuffed about pulling that out because it, it did take a, a little bit of um, head scratching to do. But essentially, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. On the blog template, what it's doing is on um, here challenge link yeah it's doing a little bit of funky uh, regex to get the challenger from the github it's getting the first see what I mean by groups so that's the first group that's the second group um, it's replacing uh, this with variable one and um, yeah it's pu just it's pulling out the it, yeah it probably could be done a little bit tidier but essentially what it's doing is it's replacing the uh, the the profile it's pulling the profile name from the first part of the github um, string so you've got github here and then you've got variable one which is the profile uh, the profile name and uh, what else is it doing and yes and then it's putting that into the SRC that's what it's doing it's get, so github forward slash and then it's pulling that out dot pong anywho because <laughs> that's how they do it so that's cool I'm happy with that I'm gonna just check oh, my phone was rumbling All good stuff. All right, so let's put that in. So we'll do a git status, git add of the things, and then we do git commit hyphen m adding July challengers. Okay. request P and I'm going to this time I'm gonna do something a little bit more sensible <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can close the close the issue I need to go into insert mode uh, silly vim 
Um, and I think, if I remember rightly, closes and then hash and then the ID of the port of the of the of the issue. So the issue here is 45. So hash 45. Let's do this as a test. So exit to come out of this, then colon, then write and quit to come out of Vim and write it and push it up. Off you go. Cool, pull request 47. Adding July challenges. Closes 45 and you can see that the hash there. Uh, and yeah, it has done a sensible thing now. So it is going to, um, we'll wait for those checks to go through. I think it, this is just um, Netlify checking various bits and pieces for the deployment. Although to be honest, I don't really know what it's doing. Page is changed. Mixed content. I don't really know. Oh, let's come away from that. <laughs> and then I understand the redirect rules and all of this stuff that need to be changed. Anywho, <laughs> we'll just wait until that goes through. Uh, it's just an excuse for me to have another cup of tea, really, or, or have a slurp of tea whilst we wait for that to go. Oh, typically it's done. So we'll merge and then we'll do confirm and then we'll, um, we'll delete the branch. That automatically should have closed that uh, issue. Closes 45 and it has done. Woo cool. Um, we'll have a little gander and see if that's gone up. Um, there was something I wanted to talk about, and that was a PHP certification. Um, I have purchased a book on getting the PHP certification to be certified as a PHP developer. <laughs> a cert a, a, what do they call it? A Zen certification of uh, PHP. And um, yeah, see, I'm in two minds because I know it's going to take a lot of work to do. I mean, I I know PHP, but I don't know how much I know. Does that make sense? I know how I don't know how much I know of PHP. I've been working with PHP for yonks for years, for decades, quite literally. And I was taught it at college, not university. At university, I was taught Java. Uh, however, I did do a I did a wee bit of PHP in university, but nothing, um, nothing as much as the others, uh, other languages. Anyway, so um, and my degree at university is web development and multimedia. It's, so it's it's not it's not specific to any kind of language. And as a freelancer, I do think that getting a certification will help, uh, especially with contracting. Um, and it's something that I kind of I've wanted to do for a while, but um, I just haven't uh, haven't done it because of the time commitments. So it's something that I'm th considering. There we go. We've got the challenger challengers on here now. So it's something I'm considering. I've purchased the book um, to go through, like a study guide, to go through it. And I, I'm going to take a sort of a, a sort of. A, a gentle approach to it to see how long I think it's going to take me to to do and off of the back of this of course there's going to be more tutorials and courses and stuff which is going to be good um, and also I think it's going to increase the credibility of how to code well if the teacher i.e. me is certified in the things that I'm teaching <laughs> um, so I do think it has to I think it has to I do need to do it quite simply it's just a case of when and how because it's not it's doing these certifications on languages it's not something that you can just do in the weekend it's not something that you can just sort of blag and 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 sort of swat overnight so i need to think very carefully as to the planning of it because there's so much that i do for how to code well 
but uh, it will just eat into that time. So anyway, it's something on the cards. Something on the cards. Right. Uh, that's the courses. Okay, that's fine. So July now has these, and if we go to here, we've got how to submit your coding challenge. That's what we've just done. Submit your challenge now goes to this. This month's excellence. Hey, uh, Enzla Kak, I can't pronounce that. Alina out, Clute. <laughs> Hope you're well. Um, yeah, right. So there's 75 questions, and uh, some of them are multiple choice, as in there's one answer, and there's multiple answers to choose from. Some of them are multiple uh, answers to multiple choice, and some of them are things that you you know, it's like things that you need to write. So, and there's, I think there's 75 questions. Um, and it's totally random. Like the, the, the set of, of, of questions is randomly picked from the huge amount of stuff that you could learn in PHP. So there's going to be loads of stuff that I learned that I'm not going to be tested on. So it's a bit of a memory thing. Um, let me just... Um, let me just grab it up. Uh, PHP certification. Uh, it is in here. So, right. Oops. Right. So, so these are the list of exam topics, right? So there's quite a lot. Everything from basics of PHP, so syntax, operators, variables, control structures, namespaces, extensions, configuration, um, performance, bytecode, caching, um, to functions, to data formats and types, object-orientated programming, you know, there's loads here, so return types, auto-loading, reflection, type hinting, uh, web features themselves, sessions, forms, get and post, uh, HTTP headers, authentication, status code, security, configuration, uh, session security, Loads and loads of stuff. Uh, encryption, hashing, then I.O., files, reading, writing, file system functions, strings and patterns. Um, and then database stuff, so SQL, joins, prepared statements, transactions, PDO, arrays, associative arrays, array iteration, array functions, error handling, exceptions, errors, throwables. Uh, so there's, a, there's a, 11 sections um, in this, and I believe if we went to uh, PHP certification study, no, here we go, certification FAQs, um, it, the exam was written by uh, the advisory board and the Zen Framework Education Advisory Board. Um, each board's members among were are most well known and respected in the PHP and Zen framework communities. Um, it's important to note that the board is completely neutral. Okay, so yeah, so it's it's built by the people who know what they're talking about essentially. Um, and you can take it. Apparently, you can take it from their testing centers. There's four thousand seven hundred of them, but also you can do it on. Um, in most cases, you have the option to take your test at home. Um, and with the exams, so this is kind of, this is both Zend and PHP. Uh, so I think the PHP exam is composed of 75 questions, but the Zend framework exam is 70 questions. As multiple choice questions with only one right answer, multiple choice questions with multiple correct answers, and a free form question um, which must be answered. And you have 90 minutes to do them. So, um, yeah, it's tough. <laughs> Essentially, it's tough, and it's it's running off of PHP seven. That's that's the version that it's um, running against. PHP two thousand two hundred dash seven one zero, so seven point one. Uh, yeah. So it's it's tough. It's tough 
And the reason why I'm thinking of doing it is because it would be great on the CV. Um, because COVID, well, so it was tough as a freelancer with COVID because um, uh, there was a period of time where things went quite quiet and I lost a lot of work. A lot of money was lost. A lot of work was lost. I was out of work for a, a period, a, a big period of time. Um, in ter- in t- a big period of time in terms of the time of not receiving money, if that makes sense. So not a large period of time in terms of a project, but a large period of time without any funds coming in, if that makes sense. Um, so, and, I, and that got me thinking as to, you know, like what else could I do to make myself a little bit more appealing for uh, contract roles and freelancers and free, freelance and stuff like that. Um, luckily the market then sort of picked up again. Um, but when it did pick up, unfortunately, I had to, you know, reduce the daily rate because, um, you know, you were <laughs> scrabbling about trying to get contracts and stuff. Uh, so it's tough. It was tough. And I was just thinking, what is, what else, what could I do to help make my CV shine and make my, me as a developer more appealing to clients who don't know me? Um... And so that was one of the reasons. But another reason, that, of course, is the How to Code Well channel that I've got here. I love teaching people how to code well. And I, I think that um, to have a cert- certificate behind me to say that the things that I'm teaching are actually correct because I know my stuff, because I've been tested myself, is, is, would, would increase the credibility of How to Code Well. Um, and I would like to do more than what, just more than this in terms of c- certifications, certainly. Um, but the challenge I've got is time because this is a huge task. <laughs> this is a huge undertaking, a ginormous undertaking um, to study the stress involved, everything. Like, I don't like exams, full stop. I've done an LPIC, which is the Linux cert- um, certified. Uh, courses and um, essentially massive book you read it as much as you possibly can you spend months and months studying and then you go to this test center where it's just you and a screen (laughs) and you get left on your own for a huge period of time or 90 minutes or whatever It, it feels like it feels like eternity and you're sweating and you're panicking and you're you're you know, screwing things up and yeah I'm not a massive exam fan but the, the, here's me making excuses <laughs> so anyway this is on the cards I might do this I might do this at some point um, yeah anyway <laughs> let's get back to Gatsby um other things that I would like to do today are, of course, the get back to the current challenge, because I think that would be handy. Um, and this is going to be like a link here, because we've got the um, we've already got the July challenges up. So I think we're going to have I might change that to be this month's challenges, previous challenges and then latest challenge or latest challenge this month's challenges and then previous challenges. (laughs) Or maybe change that to be this month's submissions. (laughs) Just because there's lots of challenges and challengers. (laughs) Um, Right, so do we have a task? I think I created a little task for this, didn't I? It was, um, did I? I'm going to put it in V2. Maybe I didn't. I got eight, add April and May. Or maybe I didn't. Let's just add that in. So new issue. Um, so here it knows that I'm on milestone 2.0, but um, still got to do all of this stuff. It is design. And the project is in this project. 
of course. So, add link to current challenge. All right. So as before, we'll do a git um, checkout of master, master, and we'll do a git pull. And then we'll do a git, uh, whoops, checkout of, uh, what, what should we call this? Add link to current challenge. So I guess features current challenge, 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 link. I can't spell current, can I? There's a P. Current challenge link, there we go. Uh, oops, no, that needs to be hyphen B because we're making a new branch. All right, so the idea is it doesn't need to be on the index because the index page is the current challenge. So that, you know, that's fine. Um, it doesn't need to be on this page because this has a link to the current challenge, which is, does it? Take a look at the current challenge. Yeah, that's essentially what I need. <laughs> a link. Let's just copy that. Um, blog template. It needs to be here, doesn't it? So previous challenges. It needs to be somewhere down here. And it's a link. And this is going to say. Um, current or this month's challenge. All right, and I wouldn't mind putting that up here. So let's just have a look and see what that looks like. I have to do a shift refresh. So this month's, oh, it doesn't look very good, does it? <laughs> this month's challenge. Um, and no, let's not say this month's, let's say latest, latest challenge. All right, latest challenge, but it doesn't, how, how would I fit this in to make it look? Because you've got headers here, um, I mean, Really, it would be something like H1. Is it H1? H. Yeah, I don't know why it's H1. H1, and then this would be uh, sort of latest challenge. And uh, it's a good job I'm not being tested on my spelling, right? <laughs> Um, and then I guess here I would say uh, something like go to. No, that's horrible. Um, all right. So we've got latest challenge, previous challenges. <clears throat> and then what I would like to have is this month's challenges or um, submissions. This month's submissions. Or just submissions. Uh, so that would be here. So I'm, I'm going away from the... Um, the root of this task, but anyway, submissions with an S. So submissions, a latest challenge, view current challenge, and then, and wouldn't it be nice to have the icon of here up there somehow? I mean, that would require a bit of GraphQL to do that. 
because essentially what I need to do is pluck out that from here. For now, let's just leave it like that. I don't want to overcomplicate this too much. I do also want to sort this out because I would love to have this in some form of order. So really that should be... That would be good. Uh, the more I look at this website, the more I'm finding, I'm, little, I'm nitpicking, right? I'm, I'm finding little things. But anyway, at least now we have uh, a link back to the homepage. So on, on all of these. All right. Cool. I I'm 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 relatively happy with that, I suppose. It'll do for now. Um right, let's do a git status. That was only the one thing we did. Git add of the things, then git commit. Minus M, and then this is adding uh, latest challenge link, and then git or hub pull request P, and I can't remember what we called what uh, it was 48. Whoops, insert mode closes hash. Was it 48? 48. All right. Escape, right and quit. Off we go. Uh, good. Uh, pull request 48, 49. All right. I'm having to wait for the re for the review. I know I can merge it now, but I want to. I do want to just check. Wait for these checks to go through. There's so much I would like to do with how to code well. So much I would like to do. The the work gets in the way. The the freelance stuff just gets in the way. You know the usual nine to five. <laughs> uh, merge that in. Confirm. Woohoo! Okay, delete that branch. And whilst that goes gets deployed, what I'm going to do is tidy up my workspace because I've got loads of dead branches. <laughs> um, git uh, branch. Hang on a minute. I thought there was. I thought there was Hello, one help. I thought there was a, a, a uh -huh. Uh -huh. hyphen hyphen list. There we go. Hey, thank you for uh, following Proxy King. Woohoo, you set the uh, emotes off. Thank you very much. Do appreciate it. Hope you're well. Hope you're having a good weekend. Good weekend. Uh, Git branch list. That's what we need. Okay, yeah, we got tons of uh, tons of branches that I can get rid of. Right, git. Whoa. Git branch minus D. I think it's. I can't remember if it's capitalized D or lowercase D. I forget. Uh, D. <laughs> There's no real sort of documentation here, is there? <laughs> I think it's git branch. Uh, oh, what's hyphen A? Okay. All right. All right. I, I usually just do the list, but hyphen A gets all of them. Ah. There we go. Something I've learned. Lists all the branches. Uh, what I want to do, oops, is come out of that. I want to do git uh, branch. 
is it hyphen D capital or lowercase? I totally, they're both on my history. Uh, I can't remember. Essentially what I want to do is delete the branches locally and delete them uh, on the repo if they are there. I reckon it's hyphen, I reckon it's capital D, but I, I'm, I don't trust myself to just run it willy nilly. So git delete uh, remote branch. Um, okay, so hyphen hyphen delete flag. Um, so glit, so yeah, a little bit, come on. Git branch A lists them all as you've seen. Git D deletes the branch. Yes, but is that remote or is that? Is that remote? You can also use D flag, which is synonymous to delete force instead of D. This will delete the branch regardless of its merge status. Okay, that's a bit harsh. Here we go. To delete a remote branch, you can't use the git branch command. Instead, use the git push command with the delete flag. Oh, yes, of course. Followed by the name of the branch you want to delete. You need to specify the remote name origin in, yes. Thank you, Liquid Web, yeah. All right, let's do the let's do the um, let's do the local ones first. So we'll do um, we'll do git list again. So local ones are these things here. Um, so let's get rid of thirty eight first. So it's git <laughs> git branch hyphen d. To delete a local branch, yeah, uh, hyphen D, and it was 38. And I, a bit, let's just, sorry, I'm going to do this in a different terminal. Just because if I did git uh, branch list here, there we go, and then on here, we do git branch hyphen D 38. Can I do more than one? Five video feature August. Let's have a have a go. Feature June and feature March. I don't know if this is possible. Yeah, it was. Woohoo! Cool. Oh, that's good. All right, so that is the one we're on at the moment current challenge link which is what we shouldn't be on actually we should be on git checkout um, master checkout master whoops can't spell checkout and then git we'll pull that down uh, so just to clarify we're now on the master branch and um, which I am going to change the name <laughs> By the way, for anyone out there who's like, ooh, should it be called master? No, I am going to change it to main um, at some point. Um, but you have to appreciate, I have many repositories that I need to do this to. Um, right. Git. Come on. Git. Uh, not remote. Git. Branch. There we go. Branch. Hyphen D. And we're going to get rid of features. Features. Oh, let me just just copy them. Just copy them. That was the reason why I put them up there in the first place. Just copy them. Uh, this one. How to submit section. That's the one we've just done. July challenges. Done that too. I wonder if there's a command or some form of something. And submit. I wonder if there's like a command that, that you can run that will delete all the branches except for a branch that you specify. <laughs> that would be handy, wouldn't it? So let's run that. And then let's do list again. Sweet. If I did git, oh, if I did git, uh, did you say uh, branch hyphen A? 
I think you did, didn't you? There we go. Okay, so we... <laughs> Yikes. We've got loads. I thought we deleted these things, though. I thought we... I thought, like, I deleted that. I thought I deleted that. Because if we went to the... That's confusing. So are you saying that now we've got many branches in here? 12 branches. Shoosh. Yeah. All right. I think uh, there was a way of taking a look at... You could do this through here, can't you? You can just go delete, delete, delete. So, yeah. Uh, stale branches are... Uh, submit. Uh, that one, 32, 33. <laughs> this is when I was calling the branches by the, by the issue number. <laughs> hey, Anthony Linux 99, thank you for following. Thank you for following. You set the emotes off. I hope you've had a really good weekend. I really do. I hope you've had a good weekend. I'm just tidying up. Um, yeah, I've deleted these locally. Um, Take care, Mr. DB. Thank you very much for your submission today, for your um, your your, your regex. It's really, really good. I, I, I enjoy doing that. That's all right. No problem. I enjoy doing it. Have a have a good uh, have a good Sunday. Have a good Sunday. Yeah. So I deleted these like locally, um, and uh, that is merged. Yeah. Cool. Um, there is a develop branch, and I don't have this locally. If I was to run that again, what is going on? Why do I need to do a git fetch? Do I need to do a git fetch? Git fetch. Uh, git fetch, and then a git branch A. <laughs> well, I am. Color me confused. Color me confused. I've just deleted them. Right, all the stale branches, I have just removed them all. Uh, if I clicked on all branches here, that can be deleted. That can be deleted. That can be deleted. Active. Mine, stale, all branches. All right. So if we did that, then we get all of them. And this is still saying that these are on remotes. I don't understand. I don't understand. But I'm just like like one of those car noises in the car. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the radio up <laughs> and forget about it. Ah, okay. Um, liquid oxygen. Uh, you need to add the hyphen P to get the updated status of all... Oh, do you? What? Like, on here? No. On what, on what, um, on what command? Git fetch P. Sorry. I didn't see. Git fetch hyphen P. Get you, 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 uh, git guru. Okay, so we can see them all deleted. So does this mean that git um, git branch A? Because this is new to me. Hyphen A. Is this ah? Okay. Right. Let me just have a look at that documentation. Git git fetch. Ah. Come on. <laughs> hyphen hyphen P. I should just call these streams watch Pete spell things wrong. Um, fetch branches or tags collectively. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I want to see what that P does. Is there a... Here we go. Prune. Before fetching, remove any remote tracking references that are no longer 
that no longer exist on remote. Thank you, Liquid Web. You are a star. Tags are not subject to pruning if they are fetched only because of the default tag. Auto following or due to the hyphen hyphen tags option. Okay. Not entirely sure what that means, but fair enough. However, if tags are fetched, yeah, we're not worrying about tags at the moment. Supplying the prune tags is shorthand for, yeah, 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 prune tags. Okay. Thank you very much. That makes a lot of sense. Before fetching, remove any re remote tracking references. So they were remote tracking references that no longer exist on the remote. I feel like Keanu Reeves in The Matrix and I've just gone, I know Kung Fu. Thank you very much. <laughs> no worries. Yes, it's uh, it's coming up to six. I need to shoot off too. I need to have my uh, my Sunday dinner. Oh, thank you very much for hanging out as well. I really appreciate it. And uh, wherever you are in the world, take take care. Um, you mentioned that it's a great morning. So, um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. I'm glad you could start it with uh, How to Code Well. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. I am going to shoot off as well. Um, I want to say a massive thank you to Mr. DB. I know that he he, he, um, he left earlier, as well as the Tilladon for the, um, the submissions. And before I leave, what I'm going to do is just go through the Python challenges once more for August. So this is now on the website, codingchallenges.howtocodewell.net. I'm going to push this into the GitHub. Sorry, I'm going to GitHub. I'm going to push this into the chat. So this is the challenges. Uh, it's Python this time round, which is something that we haven't done for a while. Um, we didn't do any, there wasn't any Python in July. It was just JavaScript and PHP. So these three Python challenges focus on tuple sets, diction, uh, sets, dictionaries, that needs to be a comma there, <laughs> sets, dictionaries, and strings, uh, create a GitHub repository with a Python file per level, submit your GitHub repository to the coding challenges channel in our discord server. So we have a discord server. Discord. There we go. Um, so you can join, you can ask coding questions there. There is a coding uh, help channel there too. It's a great place to um, to get help from other coders. Of um, And it's available to, to all levels of coders. Um, so level one, because these challenges are done in in levels, so they get they get harder as they they progress. So find the duplicates in a Python tuple. So how many times is one duplicated in the following tuple? So for example, you would write a piece of code that would output one is in the tuple four times because you got one, two, three, oh three, sorry, and then four. Level two, find the max and min of a Python set. So this is a Python set. And I would like you to write some thing, like a function, that will return eight and 32, because eight is the minimum and 32 is the maximum. Level three is count characters in a string. So create a function that counts the characters in the string, row, row, row your boat. <laughs> Uh, the function should return a dictionary where the index is the character and its value is the character count. So this would be the index and that is the value. So R is in row, row, row your boat three times, whereas B is in the string once. And of course you would have the other characters there too for the rest of the characters in here. Um, and then you would output something similar to this. Row uh, R is found in the string three times, B is found in the string one, uh, one time, and so on and so on. Um, to submit your challenge, go to this page and it says, to submit your code for review, create a GitHub repository per challenge and post uh, the GitHub repository link to the coding challenges channel on the How to Code Well Discord server. There's a link there. It's free to join. Um, each challenge will be reviewed live on Twitch at the end of the month. So this month is Python and it will go to the end of the month. And usually it's the last, um, the last Sunday of every month I do these things. And then 
there's the link to go back to the this month's challenge um, before I leave, I just want to say a massive, massive thank you to uh, Mr. DB303 and the Teledon for doing the July code challenges. This was a regex test, um, and you can access their um, uh, repositories there. And also, what I do with these review, these code reviews, is after a good few weeks, um, I upload the video that I've just done. This to YouTube, to the How To Code Well YouTube uh, live channel, and then I publish it on here as the code review. So thank you ever so much, everybody, for joining today. I really appreciate it. Take care, everybody. Have a fantastic Sunday, and uh, happy coding. Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>